Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us uh, for today's task force to eradicate human trafficking event. Today, we're going to be focusing on the transportation and hospitality industry and the unique role that they play in the fight to eradicate trafficking. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Glenn Spencer. I'm the senior vice president of the Employment Policy Division here at the U.S. Chamber. Just to let everyone know, today's program is being recorded so that it can be posted on the Chamber's website later on. Uh, this is similar to what we've done with our other events this year. As you all know, we've hosted a number of events uh, related to the issue of trafficking. And we continue to keep this task force active over the last 18 to 19 months, even as we've dealt with COVID and remote working. So I appreciate all of you taking time to join us today, and in particular, our guests taking time to join us. If you look on the, the U.S. Chamber's website under the Employment Policy Division, you'll see the number of reports that we put out this year. <laughs> as well as links to all of our previous events. So I'd encourage you to go onto the website and check out those publications and recordings. Uh, I'm now gonna turn the virtual stage over to Stefan Markulowitz. He is the chair of the Chamber's Task Force to Eradicate Human Trafficking. And he's gonna discuss a little bit about why and how the transportation and hospitality industries really have a unique role to play here as businesses work to eradicate the scourge of human trafficking. Uh, so if you are a representative of the business attending the chamber for the first time, please reach out to us. Let us know. We'd like to add you to the task force. Uh, if you're an NGO that's watching again, please follow up with us after the event uh, because we'd like to get in contact with you as well. So, Stefan, I'm now going to turn the stage over to you. So take it away. Thanks a lot, Glenn. Um, great to be here this morning and uh, good morning and welcome to everybody. Um, I am Stefan Markulowitz, as Glenn pointed out. Uh, I'm co-chair of the Business and Human Rights uh, practice group at Littler Mendelssohn and chair of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce's task force, task force to Eradicate Human Trafficking. I'd like to welcome you to today's event, Transportation and Hospitality Industries Against Human Trafficking. Human trafficking is a global problem affecting millions of people each year who are illegally lured into forced labor and sexual exploitation through force, fraud, or coercion. Make no mistake, any type of exploitation is evil and must be ended. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security estimates that human trafficking is second only to drug trafficking as the most profitable form of transnational crime, generating billions of dollars a year in illicit profits. All victims of trafficking share one essential experience, the loss of freedom. In an interconnected world, human trafficking is a global problem that touches many industries and business relationships. Traffickers rely on the transportation and hospitality sectors for moving and controlling victims and delivering them for commercial sex or forced labor, giving these sectors a critical role as the first line of defense. Two years ago, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce held a forum countering human trafficking. At that forum, the U.S. Chamber highlighted the work of the U.S. Department of Transportation's Advisory Committee on Human Trafficking. The chair of the advisory committee, Ambassador Catherine Todd Bailey, said that the private sector is empowered to lead the fight against this heinous crime based on financial resources and civic leadership. She stressed that businesses cannot do this work alone. They need to partner with governments and non-governmental organizations. Employers are leading the effort to raise awareness and education uh, related to fighting human trafficking in conjunction with governments and non-governmental organizations. The key word here is partnership. To have an effective strategy, the U.S. Chamber recognizes the important role of each of these, ent each of these entities play in preventing this evil scourge. The U.S. Department of Transportation asked the U.S. Chamber of Commerce to sign the Transportation Leaders Against Human Trafficking Pledge. The pledge calls on transportation industry leaders to join the department in committing to employee education, raising public awareness, and measuring collective impact. As a signatory to this pledge, we are raising public awareness on an ongoing basis. The chamber has developed toolkits with A21 and Truckers Against Trafficking to instruct business regarding how to look for instances of forced labor in supply chains and to detect sex trafficking. Last year, the Chamber hosted the virtual forum, Transportation Industry Against Human Trafficking. The audience heard from then Secretary of Transportation Elaine Chow about how the great strides that the agency has taken to partner with industry to address this heinous crime. The event also featured a panel of industry experts that discussed how the private sector and public sectors are working in tandem to address this crime. Michael Billett, who is the program manager of the task force, will kick off today's program with an interview featuring, featuring Corinda L. Washington from the Department of Homeland Security and Lynn Araki Regan, Deputy Director of, Admi of Administration at Hawaii's Department of Transportation about key aspects of the DHS's blue campaign and the blue lightning initiative. 
The Blue Lightning Initiative is a joint initiative between the U.S. Department of Transportation and the U.S. Customs and Border Protection to train airline personnel on how to spot the signs of human trafficking. Lynn will discuss why Hawaii became the first the first State Department of Transportation to join the Blue Lightning Initiative. Following that conversation, Kaylin Stevens, Senior Vice President, Executive and Strategic Initiatives of the American Hotel and Lodging Association will provide an overview of the AHLA's foundation's No Room for Trafficking campaign. She will then participate in a fireside chat with Abby Horswell, Senior Manager, Human Rights and Social Impact at Marriott International. Abby Horswell will elaborate on Marriott's enhanced human trafficking awareness training designed in conjunction with the ECPAT USA and with input from Polaris unveiled earlier this year on July 30th. For the final panel of the day, Ed Mortimer, Vice President of Transportation and Infrastructure at the U.S. Chamber, will moderate a discussion with the representatives of the American Trucking Association, Delta Airlines, and Maloof companies. I hope you enjoy today's event and find it informative. Michael, I turn it over to you. I'm Michael Dillett, Senior Manager of Policy Research at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and the Program Manager for the U.S. Chamber of Commerce's Task Force to Eradicate Human Trafficking. Today's topic is DHS's Blue Campaign, and I'd like to welcome to the virtual stage Corinda L. Washington, Executive Director, Social Impact and Campaigns at the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, and from Hawaii, aloha, Lynn Araki Regan, who is the Deputy Director of Administration from the State of Hawaii Department of Transportation. We don't have a lot of time for today's program, but we want to get into the meat of the substance. So I'm going to kick it over to Corinda and ask her, what is the DHS Blue Campaign and the Blue Lightning Initiative? Thank you so much, Michael, and thank you to the U.S. Chamber of Commerce for this opportunity. And it's, it's an honor to also join you, Lynn, uh, and aloha to you as well. Uh, the DHS Blue Campaign is a national public awareness campaign that is designed to educate uh, the public, law enforcement and other industry partners on the indi indicators of human trafficking, how to um, acknowledge it, identify it, and how to report it. A subset of the Blue Campaign is the Blue Lightning Initiative, what we are here to discuss today. We're so excited about this program. It was started back in 2012, and just in the last fiscal year, we've added 20 additional uh, partners to this program. It is designed to train the aviation community uh, from industry to individuals who may be going through airports on how to recognize uh, sus uh, suspected instances of human trafficking and how to report it. Um, and so we are just so thrilled to be here today and share more about the program. Going into a little more detail, how many partners are involved with the Blue Lightning Initiative and what type of organizations are they? 71 partners, and we are excited to, to share that number. You know, sometimes folks may think, well, 2012, and you only have 71 partners, um, but just the idea of sharing what the Blue Lightning Initiative is, and then working through, as we know, all the legalities to get uh, organizations on board. But what we do know is that industry partners, whether it be airlines, airports, and now as of late, we just um, onboarded our, our first university that is actually training airline um, officials to, to go out and, and, and be pilots, that they get that training before they even enter the industry. Um, and so those 71 partners are made up of, like I said, airports, airlines, um, other industry partners. We just uh, partnered with our first security firm, ProSecure, and just ensuring that the entire community, the entire enterprise within the aviation community has access to the resources that they need in order to train their personnel. So 71 is our number, but it is growing each day. I remember when I was at the first Blue Lightning campaign kickoff, and I think there were a total of 30. So, I mean, in the course of only a couple of years, we've grown exponentially. So, Hawaii is actually the first state partner of the Blue Lightning initiative. And Lynn, who was uh, happy to join us today, is one of the catalysts behind why Hawaii joined. So, I guess my question to Lynn is, why has Hawaii Department of, Joint, uh, Department of Transportation joined the Blue Lightning initiative? You know, we received a communication from our 
state of Hawaii Governor David Ige, who urged us, being that we're from the transportation industry, to partner with the Department of Homeland Security, also known as DHS, to continue to end to, to continue the fight to end human trafficking. Through this initiative um, and this partnership, the Blue Lightning Initiative will add Hawaii's five major airports to a growing community of 71 partners working in tandem to recognize and report human trafficking across the nation's transportation system. In addition to the training that we're offering to all employees, all all of our various aviation partners. We will, this partnership, we believe, will establish the DHS tip line as the state of Hawaii's primary reporting tool, connecting Hawaii to a national network of dedicated investigators and expanding the sharing of critical tips across the country. When you say, when, when you say about the five major airports, what are they? The five major airports are Honolulu, Kahului on Maui, Lihui on Kauai, Hilo, and Kona on the Big Island. So I guess to get into a little more specific, uh, specificity, exactly like how many personnel are being trained through the Blue Lightning Initiative to Corinda, and like how can organizations join? And then we'll follow up with Lynn about how many personnel have been trained in the state of Hawaii. Thankfully, through a significant partnership with the U.S. Department of Transportation and U.S. Uh, Custom and Border Protection, we have been able to train over 100,000 uh, in personnel, aviation personnel throughout the country. And that can only be done through our partnerships, not only with industry, but also the federal, state, and local, um, and now private sector and academia. And so we are, we're we're just so grateful for that number, that figure, 100,000. And again, they're constantly growing through every partnership. We're adding more individuals trained. And then specifically in Hawaii, Glenn, how many, how many employees have been trained in, in this, in this topic? Thanks for asking that question. As of last week, we have approximately 284 employees who have taken identifying human trafficking training. However, we'll continue to increase that number. Um, we have it online for us to be able to monitor to ensure our employees are trained um, and retrained. Uh, we've also circulated this online training video to our various aviation partners across our airports throughout the state. So. Getting back to the airlines and the airports, what should airport staff do when, if they suspect human trafficking in Hawaii? Well, if they suspect human trafficking in Hawaii um, or anywhere they are, if they're on vacation, working overseas for whatever reason, they are to um, report to the uh, federal law enforcement at 1-866-347-2423. And also, there's a national human trafficking hotline at 1-888-373-7888. And then in terms of nationally, Corinda, is there any specific, uh, more information that you can give the audience if, if airport or aviation staff suspect human trafficking? Yes, the numbers that Lynn provided are the same numbers that we have as well for our national tip line, for the DHS tip line. And that number again is 866-347-2423. And in addition, we also have um, to want to caution um, our partners that we are not asking you to intervene on your own if you suspect um, that there may be an instance of human trafficking that you contact and, and you're an immediate threat or there's danger to definitely ca contact local authorities, call 911, um, but do not attempt to intervene on your own. Um, and then in addition to that, if individuals are interested in learning more, learning how they can uh, suspect these instances and how to report it, uh, they can always get in contact with us by sending us an email at bluecampaign at hq.dhs.gov, also trafficking at dot.gov. And then for on January 11th is National Human Trafficking Awareness Day. So is there anything specifically that the Blue Campaign does on that day that they want to publicize during this forum? 
Absolutely. Wear Blue Day is coming up really soon. The months will go by very quickly and we will be in January, which is actually the entire month of raising awareness of this heinous crime. And so we are hopeful that all partners will join in. And, and if you are kind of on the fence of what this is all about, you could definitely Google Wear Blue Day. You will get a lot of information, but it'll also lead you to our Blue Campaign, Blue Campaign website on DHS.gov to learn all about Wear Blue Day, Human Trafficking Awareness Month, uh, and uh, how to partner with the campaign and Blue Lightning Initiative. The Chamber does uh, had a forum last year on January 11th, and we'll be continuing to hold a forum in January to mark National Human Trafficking Awareness Month. I think the key topic here is we're always evolving. The human traffickers are evolving. You know, they're becoming more sophisticated over time, and this campaign is really a joint effort between the public and the private sectors to get at the root of this problem. So, you know, I'm going to finish it off with Corinda asking her specifically, what, what should the employer community, the business community, or either outside stakeholders, uh, you know, have in terms of new content that you guys are preparing to um, address this, this heinous crime? We're also home to the If You See Something, Say Something campaign. And one of those themes is protect your every day. And this applies here with our new training that the entire life cycle of your experience and going throughout the aviation community, there are individuals along the way that we encounter that also can be our eyes and ears to suspect these instances. And so this new training is actually survivor informed that survivors have communicated to us that there were individuals at the, along the way, maybe at the newsstand, maybe at, at the local coffee shop within within the airport, or, or maybe it was a baggage uh, claim uh, worker or the gate agent that saw them but did not see them in the state that they were in. And so we are developing new training for, through the lens of those individuals, those workers along the way, that if they just know some of those indicators and some of those signs, they may be able to be our eyes and ears and may be able to save someone's life. So we're looking forward to the next iteration of our training materials. And then just to wrap up, Lynn, do you have any sort of closing thoughts, either of you, about uh, you know how the business community can get engaged with the transportation sector about leading the fight against human trafficking at the state level? Yes, if they're interested in being a part of this training effort and just public awareness, please contact the State of Hawaii Department of Transportation at 587-2150, and we can offer the training and various resources to you. And with that, we're going to wrap up this segment. But both you th thank you both to Corinda and Lynn for a very informative discussion. And the Chamber looks forward to partnering with both the State of Hawaii and the DHS Blue Campaign and getting materials out. Awesome. Thank you, thank you Michael. And thank you, Lynn. Nice to meet thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Good morning, everyone, and thank you to the Chamber team for having us here today and for continuing to host these really important events. I'm Kaylin Stevens, Senior Vice President of Executive and Strategic Initiatives at the American Hotel and Lodging Association, and was proud to have helped our team launch the No Room for Trafficking program in 2019. And pleased to say that we're now moving these efforts underneath our foundation to continue to grow and expand the efforts for the hotel industry. If you've heard me speak before here, you've heard me say that when we launched the campaign in 2019, we had one main goal, to train every single hotel worker in the, in the industry to spot and stop human trafficking. While the last year and a half has been incredibly challenging for everyone and definitely the hotel industry, our commitment to that effort has not ceased. We are more committed than ever. Hoteliers are uniquely positioned to, in the fight for human trafficking at HLA and our foundation, we help, we're helping to lead our industry's response few, through a few key pillars, raising awareness, coordinating with law enforcement, continuing our workforce trainings, and arming our industry with tools and resources. We're committed to having a comprehensive approach for our industry. And while the fight to end human trafficking has no finish line, raising awareness and training are critical and part of the ongoing commitment and culture we've built for our industry. An example of that is on July 30th, which is World Day Against Trafficking in Persons, we were pleased to announce that over 500,000 hotel workers have been trained 
using the free training that was released in 2020. That's in addition to Marriott's over 100,000 employees that had also been trained during that 2020 timeframe. Using the current training, your role in prevention and human trafficking recognized the signs that was produced by Marriott International in partnership with ECPAT USA and Polaris and is now available for free to the industry, as I mentioned, through the support of our foundation and available on ECPAT USA's website. During such a difficult year for the industry, we're really proud to be able to say that we've trained over 600,000 employees and really shows the testament and the commitment of our industry. And, you know, an example of how these trainings really work is, is one that we're also proud to talk about, which was uh, during our Stars of the Industry event in July, we were really happy to honor the Los Angeles um, Airport Marriott security team. Their training saved not just one life, but nine. Uh, during what was a normal day, a food and beverage associate was about to get off of his shift when a woman pulled him into a restroom right outside of the hotel lobby. She was 23 years old, had three children, and had been held at gunpoint at a retail plaza nearby and was now being sexually trafficked. The story could have had a much different ending if that day in that hotel, the team of associates had not been trained on what to do. Fortunately, the chain, the, the alert for, from the Food and Beverage Associate set off a chain for the associates on what to do. And they were able to get this woman protection and nine others were saved and the three men in the, in the trafficking ring were arrested. Unfortunately, these heroic instances do happen, but it really helps to illustrate the importance of training for every single associate in the hotel industry. And we're so proud to have examples of these to highlight the, the work of our industry. You know, things like this show that the arc can change from tragedy to triumph through training alone. We're gonna continue these efforts and I'm really proud just to have Abby Horswell, the Senior Manager of Human Rights and Social Impact with Marriott International joining me. We're gonna talk about new training that Marriott released on July 30th um, and talk about how it's gonna continue the, to improve and amplify the resources for our industry. Abby, there you are. <laughs> Hi, Kaylin, and hi, everyone. Thanks so much for having me here today and giving me this opportunity to talk about all the great work that we're doing at Marriott to combat human trafficking. Great. Well, let's start there before we jump into the training. You know, um, Marriott's long been committed in the fight against human trafficking, and now you're leading those efforts at the world's largest hotel company. Um, talk to me a little bit about what you're focused on um, and why. Sure. So one of Marriott's core values is how we do business is just as important as the business we do. And we recognize that businesses like us play an increasingly critical role in addressing our world's most pressing social, environmental, and economic issues. Marriott's sustainability and social impact platform, Serve 360, doing good in every direction, really guides our efforts to create that positive and sustainable impact wherever we do business. A key pillar of the platform, or coordinate as we like to call them, is welcome all and advance human rights, which is very timely as we prepare to recognize World Tourism Day. This coordinate acknowledges that trafficking I'm sorry, travel is one of the most powerful tools for promoting peace and cultural understanding and upholding human rights. Our work in this area focuses on creating a self safe and welcoming world for all, rallying for pro-travel policies and programs, upholding and respecting human rights, and of course, addressing some of the industry's highest risk and most pressing human rights issues, including human trafficking, which you can tell is fresh on my brain here. We're able to do this work in a variety of ways through nonprofit partnerships, advocacy, supplier accountability, industry collaboration, and training, which I'm sure I'll talk more about in a couple of minutes. But of course, we recognize that there's always more work to be done, and we're committed to continuously improving our efforts to address these important industry issues. We have established public-facing sustainability and social impact goals 
that guide our efforts to support the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and make a difference in our communities. Our goals related to human rights are by 2025, we aim to ensure that 100% of all on property associates have completed our human trafficking awareness training and other human rights training, including on responsible sourcing and ethical recruitment. In the interim, we'll develop new resources, including the new human trafficking awareness training to meet evolving needs and continue to scale them to make sure that they're available to the broader industry and create greater awareness. By 2025, we also aim to enhance or embed human rights criteria in our recruitment and sourcing policies and work with our industry to address human rights risks and human trafficking in the construction phase. Great. Um, lots of work underway. Um, Abby, I wanted to, to pivot for a minute and really focus on the new training that you all launched, which is going to be an incredible resource for our industry. I wanted to see if you could talk a little bit more about what, you know, what's included in the new training. And in, in particular, we're really excited that this training has sort of two paths, right? One for associates and also one for managers, which we think is really critical um, as we think about the chain of events like this hotel security team, right? And making sure that everyone along the way knows what to do. So can you talk a little bit more about, you know, that new training, what's included in it and, um, and why you chose to do both of those? Absolutely. We are so excited about this new training that, as Caitlin mentioned, Marriott launched on July 30th of this year. And we're very much looking forward to making it available to the broader industry, which we hope will happen early next year. So there are really two main reasons that we thought it was important to update this training. First, the world has changed significantly since Marriott launched its original training in 2016. COVID-19 in particular has ushered in more contactless and mobile hotel experiences, which we know have been invaluable for minimizing the spread of the virus, but also make it more difficult to spot potential indicators of trafficking. Our new training incorporates aspects of this higher tech and lower touch operating environment and explains how associates can still recognize human trafficking even in mobile check-in experiences or amid evolving room cleaning protocols. Second, we have also learned as a field a lot about the most effective ways to train on human trafficking. Previous trainings have really focused on potential indicators, providing a long list of signs to spot, but we now recognize that many of these warning signs are really nuanced and require some additional explanation in order to resonate with learners. In a series of focus groups, Marriott Associates share that they really needed more context on these indicators to better understand them, and managers said that they needed more guidance to understand how to assess them and respond appropriately. In addition, the anti-trafficking field has really increasingly acknowledged the importance of listening to and learning from survivors and incorporating their perspectives into programming. So taking all of that into account, this new training, which is called Recognize and Respond, Addressing Human Trafficking in the Hospitality Industry, aims to build off that foundation established from our original training and help associates more effectively recognize and respond to potential indicators. The new training consists of three separate modules um, with some, some key updates. So as Kaylin mentioned, we have separate learning paths for non-management associates and managers. So associates are instructed to report potential trafficking situations to their managers, and managers are provided with a lot of additional guidance to help them assess the situations and report them, and maybe even interact with potential victims. Likewise, we have a lot of additional information to help associates understand human trafficking and contextualize the indicators they might observe, which means the training is approximately 60 minutes for associates and 80 minutes for managers, which is a big increase from our previous 30-minute training to provide all of that extra information. As I mentioned, the training is also survivor informed as we incorporated meaningful input from survivors throughout the development process to really ensure that our response is victim centered and that our training and all of the accompanying resources that we developed are survivor informed. 
And finally, the training incorporates four scenarios that are based on calls to the National Human Trafficking Hotline and incidents reported to Marriott's Global Safety and Security team to help learners really navigate authentic scenarios and practice their decision-making skills. We use the same scenarios in both the non-management and the manager learning paths, but the perspective shifts so that the associates are experiencing the situations while the managers are gathering information provided by different associates. To give you a sense of what I'm talking about, I'm going to play the beginning of one of these scenarios, which takes place in a hotel room. Now, let's look at a situation that might take place within a guest room. Seeing there isn't a do not disturb sign on the guest room door, a housekeeper knocks on the door and identifies themselves three times. After no response from the room, she enters the room to perform her cleaning tasks. She notices that the room is very messy. Women's clothing is strewn all over the floor, including several school uniforms and lots of lingerie. There are piles of towels on the floor next to the bed, far more towels than were originally included in the room. When she looks in the bathroom, she sees even more towels on the floor and notices a few have blood stains on them. After gathering the dirty towels, the housekeeper sees two student identification cards on the floor. While she doesn't normally look at personal items in guest rooms, she is becoming concerned about some of the warning signs she has seen. She notices the identification cards include their birthdays. They are both 16 years old. On the nightstand and desk, there are large piles of cash. As the housekeeper is cleaning the desk, she notices an open laptop is displaying an online ad with pictures of females that look like the two girls she saw on the student identification cards. She looks in the trash can and sees empty condom boxes and a few small orange plastic caps. The housekeeper's mother has diabetes, and she recognizes the caps as tops to syringes. Suddenly, a female guest yells from the hallway. She is furious with the housekeeper for entering the room and asks her not to return for the duration of the stay. I hope you all enjoyed that brief sneak peek of our training. As we did with the first training, we will be donating this updated training to the broader industry through ACPAT USA and with support of the American Hotel and Lodging Foundation. So you'll be able to see the full training in the upcoming months. That's great. Thanks, Abby. And having seen the modules, it really is, um, it, it's a great update to the training and really provides, you know, in particular, I think those scenario-based pieces are, are, are super helpful to our associates. Um, I know we're, we're running out of time, but wanted to just uh, say again, thank you to Abby for the leadership that, that you have within Marriott and our industry and for joining today and again to the chamber for having us. And we encourage anyone who would like to check out our current training. And we also have a recording of a webinar where Abby walked through the training more in depth that we did on July 30th. You're welcome to go onto our website. It's um, hlafoundation.org and you can check out all of those resources and trainings there. Thank you again. Bye. Good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you all for being with us today. Uh, my name is Ed Mortimer. I'm the Vice President of Transportation and Infrastructure at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, and uh, honored to be again a part of this important conversation. Um, and obviously, the transportation network uh, has a unique role, but responsibility for addressing uh, this critical issue. And so, uh, again, I'm glad to moderate this panel. Very honored to be joined by three industry leaders. Um, we have the aviation industry, we have the trucking industry, we have a small business owner, and each of them have some different perspectives. But again, I think you'll see some common themes that we want to highlight more, that the private sector is not just trying to identify and stop, but also working to work with victims of uh, trafficking to you know make their life better moving forward. So again, very honored to have our three guests today to kind of 
tell us what they're doing, tell us some things that they've learned in their work over the years in this area. So we're gonna start with Meg Taylor, who is the Vice President, Chief Litigation and Employment Counsel at Delta Airlines. Meg, thanks for joining us. I think you're on mute, Meg. There you go. Okay, can you hear me now? Yep. Wonderful, thank you so much. Um, I'm honored to be here today. Um, Delta is honored to be um, part of the fight against human trafficking. This is a fight that we have been passionately engaged in since 2011, when we became the first airline to join ECPAT. Um, since that time, we have continued to focus on how we can use the strength of our brand, the, um, the strength of our employee footprint, the breadth of our customer footprint, really to raise awareness and make a difference in the fight against human trafficking. Um, part of what we have learned over the years is that partnership is critical to both raising awareness and making a difference. And in the very early days of our involvement in this fight, we partnered with Department of Homeland Security on the Blue Lightning campaign. And through that process collaborated to come up with training that would help our employees identify the indicia of um, trafficking victims. What, what are the sites and signs to look for? And then what do you do with that information when you find it? And with that training, we have trained um, over 75,000 Delta employees and retirees. Um, in addition to using the training to raise awareness, we have raised awareness with our customers on board the aircraft. We've used videos, we've had articles in the Sky um, Magazine when it was available. And then, um, you know, more recently have engaged our customers to help make a difference by creating a Skywish, Sky Miles um, uh, a, a process where um, our customers can donate miles that go directly to victims and survivors of trafficking. Um, and through Polaris, we have donated 10 million miles and provided 170 flights to victims and survivors of trafficking so that they can get critical care, so that they can relocate home or to some safe abode and also um, uh, participate in law enforcement proceedings as necessary. Other partnerships, um, of course, are with our, our NGOs, uh, organizations like ECPAT and Polaris, um, Wellspring Living and Freedom United. Um, with Polaris, we have uh, donated $3 million mile, excuse me, $3 million to date to support the National Human Trafficking Helpline and also um, their research on um, how to support and care for human trafficking victims and survivors. Um, through Wellspring Living, we have also initiated a mentorship or apprenticeship program where survivors of um, trafficking can um, come work at Delta with their background being anonymous and begin to start a new life by integrating into a workforce where people don't know their history and they get to come and they get to reinvent themselves and just demonstrate their skills, learn skills, uh, develop a resume and put them on a path to reintegration into society and a, um, an independent life. We also have partnered with other corporations. Ed Bastian is our CEO and he is a passionate leader in this space and has called together CEO roundtables where we have um, gathered some of the biggest companies here in Georgia like Chick-fil-A, Coca-Cola, IHG, UPS, Home Depot, Georgia Pacific and others and really um, had a call to action to say, for those of you who already have programs, let's collaborate and figure out best practices so that we can continue to raise the effectiveness of our programs. And for those of you who 
aren't yet involved, let's everybody share our playbooks so that we can have more companies, um, more employee bases, more customer bases being engaged in the fight. Um, and then, um, you know, we have also partnered with our legislators, both at a federal and a state level, um, where we have um, encouraged them to support legislation that supports victims and survivors of human trafficking and, and holds those traffickers accountable. So, you know, with all of these things, we are just continuing to work hard to raise awareness and make a difference. And, and we believe we're really doing so. Great. Thank you very much, Meg. That was very insightful. Appreciate it. Uh, next, we're going to hear from Sam Maloof, who's the CEO of Maloof Companies. Sam, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, we're excited to be here. Um, our story, uh, my wife and I started a betting company uh, about 18 years ago. And over the years, we contributed to a lot of uh, special needs situations, traumatic situations, uh, uh, people fleeing uh, different uh, abuse scenarios. And in that process, we learned about human trafficking uh, here in America specifically. And for us, like anybody else, it's a, it's a big shock. And we, we were fortunate to have a company that <clears throat> had a lot of resources and a lot of passion about the topic. And so just to kind of follow the pattern we went through, we really wanted to educate and create awareness around the topic. And so we created a foundation uh, called the Blue Foundation back in 2016 and really started by uh, creating an educational program called On Watch. And it's available to the public for free. Uh, it's survivor led. And so it really informs, as, as you know, most of us know, it debunks a lot of the a lot of what people believe uh, trafficking looks like and and, you know, that it exists with such prevalence here in the United States. So it's an hour long free video training, uh, you know, really professionally uh, done and, and has, has set a lot of precedent uh, for the public and just informing everybody about what trafficking looks like. And unfortunately, what, what can be uh, typical daily scenarios for for you know any citizen in America. So that's that's uh, kind of falls in our education awareness pillar. And then in the second uh, in the second pillar, we focus on healing. So we've done a lot of support, uh, consulting, and now construction of restorative uh, care facilities. As as everybody knows, um, there's a huge huge shortage in residential care for uh, survivors of sex trafficking, specifically here in America. And so we recently announced uh, constructing the first uh, aftercare facility for female minors of sex trafficking here in Utah. And so that's something we're working toward in addition to some of our other work with other restorative care facilities. And then third, we, 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 like I mentioned, we've got a lot of vertical, um, disciplines and capabilities within our company. Uh, one of those is government affairs. And so we work a lot, uh, also with, uh, legislative bodies in creating reform that will increase sentencing and convictions and bring justice to uh, survivors as well as the perpetrators. Great. Thank you, Sam. Appreciate it. Uh, next speaker is Elizabeth Barna, who is the Executive Vice President of Industry Affairs and Senior Advisor to the President and CEO of the American Trucking Association. So Elizabeth, thanks for being with us. Thanks, Ed, and, and thanks for the U.S. Chamber of Commerce for having uh, me here today. The American Trucking Association has been very engaged in, com in combating human trafficking in our industry. We work hand in glove with Truckers Against Trafficking and with the Blue Campaign, and I'm proud to say that we have really made a difference. Our goal is to not only train professional truck drivers, but all 7.4 million um, of those individuals employed in the trucking industry. And we train them on how to spot trafficking and steps to take once you do. The National Human Trafficking Hotline, which is 888-373-7888, has received over 2,700 calls, identified over 1,300 victims, and 708 like cases of human trafficking were generated. And that is from the trucking industry alone. And so I think those numbers are really mind boggling. Uh, it shows that that people are out there, the trainers, those that have been trained are uh, making that call. And I like to always say, you know, no call is a bad call. If you even just suspect it, but you're not sure, still make a call. Um, 
To date, the number of trucking industry professionals that have been trained is over 1.2 million professional truck drivers. And that number doesn't include the industry that are trained and many other drivers and companies that have not let us know that they've got a training program, but are using our uh, resources. You know, in the past, we've discussed the many different audiences we work with, including the driver, the travel plaza employees, the bus industry, and the law enforcement. But we're also excited to uh, start training the moving and storage industry. And TAT also now has a new program, the Empower Freedom Program, which is working in the energy arena. So companies like Phillips 66, Marathon, TC Energy, Precision Pipeline, and ConocoPhillips um, are now joining the fight with all of us. As a board member of TAT, I'm proud to announce uh, that at the end of the year, we're going to be de debuting a new film that is specifically designed for local drivers, delivery, movers, rideshare, drivers who are in and around homes and local businesses. We're also still pushing our man-to-man -man campaign, which has professional truck drivers talking with other drivers that if there's no buyer, there's no victim, and then there's no sex trafficking, which is an extremely important message. And also really encouraging all companies to adopt a zero to tolerance policy. You know, think about it. What company wants to employ someone who is a trafficker, someone who's helped a trafficker, or even someone who knows about a trafficking situation? And so that zero tolerance policy has really um, is important and is making a big difference. There's a lot going on within the trucking space, and we you know, continue to encourage all professionals to join the fight. Um, it's a top priority for ATA and our 50 state trucking associations. And now with the moving and storage industry joining our federation, it's important with them and their state associations as well. Um, I was just in the Birmingham airport this week and saw a poster from the blue campaign in the ladies room. And then I flew Delta, where the message is very loud and clear. So congratulations. Uh, to the Blue camp Campaign and Delta um, and everyone really for just doing an outstanding job. You know, human trafficking is horrific and we have to all join forces to make a difference. Thanks, Ed. Great. Thanks, Elizabeth. Appreciate those thoughts. So again, I think we have, first of all, we have three great panelists who have been true leaders in this area. Their organizations, their industries have. One theme that I've kind of got out of this is the partnerships. You all have gone beyond your industries. So I wonder if you could each touch on giving advice for others, like how do you reach beyond just, Meg, you talked about your customers, you know, you, you have a whole group of outside people. How do we do that? How do we get, because again, I think the people that are listening today, they understand this issue. They're part of the solution. How do we continue to grow those organizations and companies that are part of the solution? So Meg, I'll start with you. Sure. And the, the first thing I'll say is that, you know, there is a natural hesitancy by many companies to, to be very um, visible in the human trafficking space because companies understandably struggle with how they will pair a, a very dark and, and troubling and tragic topic like human trafficking with their very valuable um, brand that they have often built, spent decades developing and, and perfecting. And what I will tell you is, is lean in. Um, our customer bases are smarter than that. They are not going to be um, discouraged or think ill of companies because they pair themselves with this topic. Rather, they're going to appreciate the courage and the fact that um, corporations are using their resources and the power of their brand and the power of their people to take meaningful action to stop something that is is morally reprehensible. And, and really, that's where Delta um, got clarity. We figured out pretty early on that this wasn't a business issue. This was a moral imperative. And then we have conducted ourselves along those lines. So, um, you know, we have trusted our customers and look for opportunities for if we in, if we inform them, if they have the information, they're going to do the right thing too. And that has proven to be so um, through our Skywish program and the 10 million miles that have been donated and the 170 flights that we've been able to provide. But we get tremendous um, praise and support from our customer base because of the work we're doing. They know we're out there. 
they know we're passionate about it. They know we're making a difference and, and everybody supports that. Great. Thanks, Meg. Sam? Yeah, I, I wanted to, to echo what Meg said. Um, you know, I think uh, there's a lot of creativity that's, that can be utilized in this, in this space. It starts with education awareness. We know that people can't do anything about this until they know about it. And that's, I think, the biggest gap societally. Um, in our industry, we recognize, you know, much like Delta, we recognize we had this force of, much like Delta, but on a much smaller level, we recognize we had this force of, of you know, employees that cared and then we also had a position in the industry and, and we felt like a responsibility to educate and then engage people further. And so, again, also to echo what Meg said, it's it's a non divisive. It's a it's a it's an un, it's a it's a you know, it's politically neutral. Um, people, when they know about it, they have to support it and they do. And I think like like you mentioned, Meg, there's not fear and reprehension in doing so. Um, what you know? what we talk to a lot of companies about is get educated. So we've got on watch. We actually have an on watch advocate program where companies can, ha can train 90% of their people and then they become on watch advocates. And we've seen that engage companies and then them also uh, deploying creativity to find out how they can have an impact in their sphere of influence with their customers. And we see that trickle all the way down to end consumers that are purchasing products. Uh, in our industry, we also engaged with, um, you know, a lot of the delivery, uh, you know, networks and and uh, and companies. We recognize that there was, you know, bedroom bedroom furniture and mattresses. Uh, we were producing being delivered into bedrooms all over America every day, and so that was another reason that we deployed on watch was to train those drivers. Um, we've also found that, you know, just you know, introducing this into every form of conversation we can have uh, yields great results. We put on a summit earlier this year. Um, and had some great uh, governmental uh, attendance as well as a lot of people from the private sector. We had some some investors there that got together on the spot and said, "Hey, let's put together a scholarship program um, that you know that we want a lot of people to know about now because it deployed uh, just about a month ago a month ago called the Juniper Scholarship. We have a lot of scholarships to give out. It's for survivors of sex trafficking." And um, it's a full four-year degree that's free of charge. It can be done from anywhere, um, anywhere in the country, remotely. So we've just we've just seen a lot of creativity in people getting educated and then recognizing how they can have an impact. Great, thanks, Sam and Elizabeth. Yeah, I mean, I think partnerships are the key to success for everything, but especially in this arena. Um, you know, partnering with law enforcement. A lot of times, the law enforcement. Uh, feels like it's just prostitution and to be able to educate them that this might be a human trafficking situation has really helped us and, and help law enforcement make some um, strides in arresting, um, you know, groups of pimps and, um, you know, really saving lives. In our industry, you know, obviously we like to save lives on the highway, um, but being able to do this has really given a sense of pride within our industry and especially our drivers, um, those that have made a call and have seen what that, that call did um, has really encouraged them to do more. Uh, we've got a TAT ambassador program where there are drivers that will go out and speak to them and speak to different groups. And then on the partnership level too, um, you know, our shippers are very important and the folks that we deliver to and deliver for. And so getting them engaged uh, the last year or two years has been really um, important as well. So partnerships are definitely key to everything. Great, thank you. Uh, this has been a great session. Uh, I feel like we go on for another hour. Um, but Meg, Sam, Elizabeth, really appreciate everything you all are doing, your, your companies, your organizations are doing. This is a critical issue, and hopefully we continue to educate more and more people on the tools to identify, to address, and then to help people who have suffered through this. Um, so again, they can realize there is a great, there's a great life and opportunities ahead once we're through this. So again, thank you all very much for participating. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. To our other speakers and to our audience, thank you for joining us this morning for today's forum. Our next forum will be in January to commemorate National Human Trafficking Awareness Month. In the meantime, be safe, stay well, and have a good rest of the day.